Would you like to play a line with the solidity of Karo Khan and the easy development of Pierce defense? That's what Karo Pierce aims for. Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to play Karo Pierce defense. It's a very interesting variation. It has been played by top GMs like for example Shirov. At the same time, we need to say that it's not played very often in the Elite, so it's not like a super strong line, but the best thing is the surprise factor when you play this line. I'm almost quite sure your opponent doesn't know the theory. They might be a little disorientated. They probably don't know where they are facing a Karakan or a Pierce or a Modern. So that's the good thing. They don't have the theory. So uh, if you understand the positions, if you understand the, the ideas that we're going to learn here, you will understand the middle game and the opening very well. In the video, we're going to have three sections. In the first part, we're going to see uh, general ideas, usual plans and developments for our pieces. In the second session, we're going to see some opening moves. So we're going to go through uh, the moves depending on how White can play. And you're going to see how to deal with those moves. And then uh, finally, we're going to see examples a tactical examples, miniatures, attack games that are very good to learn and understand the ideas for these positions. That being said, let's get started. Let's learn how to play Carol Pierce Defense. So we have Carol Pierce Defense after a4. You're going to play g6. It's like if you're playing a modern uh, defense and they play d4, you play bishop g7 and they play knight c3. So this is like the key position for Carol Pierce. In this position, we are going to play c6. This is where everything starts. Here we are officially in Carol Pierce defense. As you can see, we are playing c6, typical move in Carol Khan, but also we are playing g6, typical move in Pierce or in modern defenses. At this point, uh, your opponent has some moves and we're going to go through the main options that white can play for example knight f3 or pawn to f4 or bishop to e3 or bishop to c4 those are the four main options and we are going to go through those options later and uh, advance a little in the variation but first we need to talk about the idea like what are we trying to do in this line why is this a good line so basically you won't have big development trouble um, on the king side. So in general, it might be a little easier to develop your king side, but at the same time, you will have a solid position as it usually happens in Karo Khan. So something we need to understand very well is that we play c6 instead of d6 because we actually are trying to play d5. That's a good thing. Like we're fighting for the center very actively. We want to play d5 here. And when they play knight f3, bishop b3 or a4, that's something we can do for sure. We can play a4, uh, sorry, d5, no matter what in those lines. And that's what we are going to do. And that's like the main objective here. We have more space. However, in the other line, when they play bishop c4, eh, we won't be able to play d5. They are controlling d5 very well. So we cannot do that, but we can do other things. Like we can expand on the queen side, getting tempi by attacking his pieces. So it's still very interesting and very playable for black if that's the case. So, you know, that's the idea. We want to develop the pieces quickly and we want to play d5. That's like what we are aiming for in Carol Pierce. And depending on how white play, we might be able to get this or get some other things uh, if they play bishop c4. So let's go and analyze a little the options that white can play. For example, uh, let's assume knight f3. This is one of the most normal moves. You're going to see a move like this, I guess, most of the time. So we need to get ready to deal with that move. At this point, we play d5, as we said. That's what we need to do. We break the center. We fight for the center, as it usually happens in Karakan after uh, d5 the most dangerous move is when they play e5 i mean pawn takes pawn doesn't get anything just recapture back and this is a symmetrical center so there is nothing uh, to be afraid of it probably white might be a slightly better or something but nothing special and so the critical line is when they play e5 and this is especially annoying because you cannot develop the the knight over f6 and in these positions we can try this move f6 and the idea is that we're going to put a lot of pressure on this pawn something i need you to understand as you know i like to understand positions more than memorize moves it's something we are going to try to do most of the time but this time when we can play f6 when we can play bishop g4 we can play knight d7 even sometimes we can play knight h6 knight f7 the pressure on e5 is very serious so very often we'll make we'll make them trade here and that's what we want we want to get rid of that pawn in this position a theoretical move is bishop f4 and we can continue here uh, of course if they capture you just take back with the knight and this is totally okay we are fine we are going to have the half open file over here and we are going to have a very easy development that's what we need so if they play bishop f4 instead we are going to continue with the pressure 
in the center. So we play bishop g4, very typical move. Very often in this land, we're going to trade this bishop on f3 because we don't have like a, like a great square. The bishop is either exposed or passive in all these squares. So we are fine with a trade on f3. So uh, whenever they play h3, we can just trade and this is totally okay. And this position is even more justified because, because of the pressure on e5. So yeah, this position is slightly better for white maybe, but as we have so much pressure here, we have easy development. Uh, if they trade, we can develop the knight over here, but if they don't trade, we also have the option of developing knight h6, knight f7, or knight h6, knight f5. And in any case, uh, the position is very playable. That's the line of knight f3. Another line that we should look at is when they play f4, for example. And this time we are going to play with d5. As you know, as we already said, we always play d5 if we can. So here, again, the most annoying move is e5. Our moves don't create real problems here. And at this point, there is a move that we need to remember and that we need to understand. And this is the move h5. The idea is that we want to control very well these squares on the king side, like f5 and g4. We're going to use those squares with our minor pieces. The knight is going to be developed over h6. And probably we will play bishop g4 and knight f5. That's the, the normal plan. Bishop g4 to trade it for some minor piece over here especially after h3, is the plan. Again, we don't have like a great option for this bishop. Over here, the knight should come to f5. Uh, the bishop uh, can be traded perfectly, and it's uh, the normal plan in these positions. Another idea that we should highlight is that, uh, especially after h3, we can continue with h4 in some positions, because we're going to have the knight on f5. So we're going to reinforce the knight, but at the same time, when they play h3, they are weakening g3. So we can use the pawn and the knight to control that square. So that's why we play h5 here. We're going to control either here, or here, or here, and here at the same time. So we're going to have some pressure there on the king side with our minor pieces. So after h5, let's say bishop b3, well, you can play knight h6. The line continues with knight f3. You can play bishop g4 here. This is what we were saying. We try to trade that bishop because we don't have like too much space. So trading some pieces is fine, especially the bishop. We don't have great squares for that. So h3, we can trade here. And then after queen takes bishop, you can play this move. And also remember this move because I think it's instructive. It's special. And it is this move h4. The idea, control here and here with the knight. We're going to have space on the king side. Good defense over there. Eventually we can play a6. So the queen also defends here. And of course, knight, nice and easy development with this knight. So everything looks fine. Everything looks correct. We can say that white is a little better. But nothing more than that. And totally playable easy development. So that's the idea of this line. That's the variation when they play a four. But also we need to look at the line when they play a bishop to e3. One more time, they are not trying to stop our d5. So we are going to play d5. And if they play a e5, and then we continue with f6. Basically, we are forcing the move pawn to f4 here. And then we can continue with knight to h6. Observe that this time we don't play h5 because we don't have the perfect chain of pawns f7, g6, h5. So if you play h5, you're like weakening too much g6 here. Uh, so it's not clear, it's not uh, looking good, the, the, the idea of h5 this time. So we just develop the knight and we try to control the king side this way. But also keep in mind that the plan is to develop the bishop first before we play knight f5, because we want to trade the bishop or at least bring the bishop to g4 before we play knight f5 so the bishop is not trapped over this square so that's what happens in the line when they play bishop to e3 but let's focus on the line where they don't let us play d5 so they play bishop c4 here and they are controlling with three pieces the square d5 so we are not ready to play that move what do we do in this case well in this case we are just going to use a normal development we are going to play slightly more passive with d6 but there is like we are going to get into some kind of a uh, motor defense but very convenient because we are going to have like b5 b4 and the expansion on the queen side so it's going to be very nice very easy to play so we just play here d6 for example um if they play normal with knight of three you play knight of six typical position for purse, purse defense for classical variation if you want to learn how to play purse defense i will include a card up there and also same thing for uh Karakan. if you want to learn how to play Karakan, i have a video in the channel explaining the general ideas, very short, about how to play Karakan defense. 
So yeah, here we just play with a uh, knight of six. If they play like this, knight of six, typical uh, purse defense position, totally okay for black. And if they play a uh, queen f3, actually queen f3 is a more annoying move, a more uh, aggressive, and it's trying to prove black wrong with this development. So they might try queen f3 here. The idea is that they have pressure on on f7, so it's not so easy to defend at this point. But well, we can just play the move e6. So yeah, this is a solid structure here. We are fine. Good pawns there around the center. We are defending. And the next move we have knight e7, knight d7. We castle b5, and we expand on the queen side. And also the bishop can be developed over a6. For example, the line might continue. Knight e2, b5, bishop b3, a5. Now we're getting the bishop on b3, so they might play a3. Here we can develop the bishop to a6. They can castle knight e7. This position is almost equal so totally playable nice development with knight a to d7 for example and the best thing is like you have breaks like you have d5 you have c5 b4 a4 you have all these ideas all these threats uh, all the time so your opponent must watch out for all those moves so let's take a look at some miniature games very exciting with combination and fulminant attacks where you will get familiar with a uh, the general opening moves, but also with the mid again. So what's coming after the opening? So for example, this one, e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7, knight c3, and then c6. Here we have Carl Pierce. And this time this line, a4. We said we would play here d5. And white plays here, e5. In this game, we have h5, the same idea we have been talking about. There is knight of three, knight h6, the development over this is square. Bishop e2, bishop g4 first before we improve the knight. In this game, white castles, we bring the knight to f5, and they play b3, and then you can play e6 here. Very solid structure. We should highlight uh, all these pawns. They are all connected. That's interesting. Um, after e6, white plays here, queen d2, and there is this plan. Bishop to f8. This is interesting because the bishop on g7 is like doing nothing, and there is no real danger on the king side right now. So the bishop can be much better on this diagonal. There are options over here, options over here. So obviously the bishop is better at this point. So this is an interesting and instructive maneuver. Um, in the game, white plays king h1. There is bishop b4, and there is a3, and there is bishop to a5. At this point, queen d3 to escape from the pin, and there is h4, aggressive move. There is a big mistake by white here, and there is the move knight to g1. At this point, it is black to move. If you want to pause the video, black is actually winning the game here. And this is the move knight to g3. Observe the rook is on the same line as the king. That's a big problem for white. So we are just trying to open that line. So knight g3 is basically winning the game. After h takes, h takes, knight to h3 is the only move they can play. And then we have bishop to h3. That is that if they recapture back, you can play queen h4, and this is going to be unstoppable, and also mate is pretty close. So they don't really recapture. White is just playing here king g1, but well, queen h4 is coming either way. And the idea is that we want to move the bishop to mate over there. So this is just winning the game. Another instructive example is this one. So let's see e4, g6, d4, bishop to g7, knight to c3, and then carpers with c6. Here, this line, bishop to e3. We said we will play d5. And this time, white is playing queen d2. And this is, in general, if they don't play e5, it's like, okay, we are fine, they didn't play e5, we can develop, this is more or less a, a little more comf comfortably. So, for example, here we just capture on e4, and it takes e4, and then knight d7. Uh, the idea, of course, we want to bring the knight to f6 very soon. White castles queen side, knight f6, totally okay. They play f3, and then we can't castle. This is a very nice position for black. We're totally okay here. There is h4, knight takes e4, f takes e4, and then knight to f6, improving our pieces. e5, knight g4, trying to get that bishop. It's a very important bishop in the attack, but also covering the dark squares on this diagonal. Bishop to f4, and then this move that we should remember, and it is c5. Very typical move in Pierce and also very typical in Karo Khan. So, of course, we are going to use it in Karo Pierce. Uh, the idea of c5 is like we are undermining white's center. 
and there is a lot of pressure here on, on this pawn. So they play here knight f3, the receipt takes d4, and then h5. Observe that as we have opposite side castlings, the attacks here are going to be a very fast and furious attacks. But something good is that we already opened this file, so we are going to use it to attack as well. So at this point, bishop f5, knight takes d4, and then rook c8. A lot of pressure here on c2. In the game, white is playing rook to e1 to defend the pawn on e5, but this is actually a blunder. In this position, it is black to move, and black is winning. I will say the move very soon, but if you want, you can pause the video and try to uh, find a way to win. There is a tactical sequence here winning the game. Black played in this position. The amazing move is a queen sacrifice. Queen takes d4. And there is that uh, after the queen takes, if they don't take, they have a piece down. So if the, the queen takes, black played, rook takes e2. And here, white has two options, either king b1 or king d1. After king b1, we will discover and get the queen and we'll have an extra piece. And after king d1, we will have knight f2. In any case, it's a decisive advantage for black. So for example, in the end, there is king b1, but let me show you what happens when they play king d1. Here, we just give a check and we get the queen. And here, we only have like one extra point here, but this is not about one pawn. This is about the king in danger. For example, you're still playing rook here, you're still playing rook there. You still have many threats, so this is totally one. Also, bishop g4 is a check that we can use. So in this position, it is black is totally one. This is we are going to get more than only one pawn here. It's a decisive advantage for black. Remember, we are also attacking the bishop, attacking the pawn, and attacking the pawn. But I have the feeling that we don't, we don't need to take more pawns because we can capture more material. Well, uh, white is playing here king b1, and after king b1, black plays rook c4, and this is getting the queen. And we will have an extra knight because we took a knight on d4 earlier. So that's why white is going to resign at this point. This is another nice example. There's d4, g6, e4, bishop g7, and then knight c3 and c6. After bishop c4, this is the line where they prevent our d5. Well, here we play d6. We play queen f3. Okay, well, we play e6, as we already mentioned earlier. Knight e2. Okay, normal development. Knight d7. a4. Queen to e7. Um, white castles, knight f6. And at this point, b3 and then e5. So this is totally okay here. We are actually in, in good position here in the center. Bishop to a3, e takes d4, knight takes d4, and then knight to e5. We are attacking queen, attacking bishop. We can get this bishop very soon. White plays here, queen e2. I'm actually in this position. Uh, black was very aggressive and played knight fg4. They want to create threats on the king side, also threats with the knight hanging on d4. Um, actually, the best move in the position is something normal like castling, and black is totally okay, even slightly better. That's interesting. How can black get even better positions if white is not careful in, in this opening? Well, knight fg4 was played. It's actually not that good. Rook d1. But it's not that good, but it's going to work very well in the game. So let's see uh, how this continues. Knight takes e4 now, we get that bishop, of course, queen takes e4 and then queen e5. Now the idea is that we want to attack here very seriously. And here it's not good because uh, the position is better for white because they can play f4. But in the game, white's playing g3, which is actually a mistake. f4, queen here, you're threatening checkmate, and you're threatening a fork. I guess that's what white thought here. However, the position is totally okay when they play, for example, a knight of three, because they can sacrifice the exchange and, for example, capture the pawn on, on d6, and they will have a more than enough compensation there and many real threats. So that's why in this position, f4 is totally playable. But instead of that, white played g3, and now black is fine. The game continues with queen h5, h4, and then this move, knight to e5. You're attacking the queen, and you have ideas with knight f3. The main idea here is like the weakness that white has on the light squares because you have the bishop, you have the knight, and you have the queen. All those pieces control light squares. And remember that white doesn't have a light squares bishop. We just took it on c4, so most earlier. So basically we can say that white is lost in this position because of that weakness there. For example, in the game, uh, 
white played queen b4, but also, for example, if they play queen e2, try to trade pieces, simplify, and get rid of the pressure, this is not going to work. You can capture, that is, you want to play knight r3. Even if they take with this knight, you can play uh, bishop a3 first, uh, and then after rook e1, you can play c5. So basically, you can you can use this square sometime soon. Even if they play f4, you capture, and if they take your knight, well, then you capture here. We have the advantage at this point, two bishops, extra pawn. This is winning for black. Well, in the game, queen b4 was played, and then, well, as you can imagine, the, the pressure is coming over here, but first, let's make sure we're not receiving mate or anything. So we castle, queen takes d6, and then bishop to a3. Then, uh, in the game, bishop b2 was played, and after knight f3, this is winning the game for, for black. In mind, like, they are getting one piece over here, but also they are getting the exchange over here, and white cannot capture, because if they capture queen takes, it's a mating net. And black is going to win. Finally, let's take a look at another game that is going to be highly interesting. e4, g6, d4, bishop, g7, knight, c3, and then c6. At this point, we're going to see the line of knight f3, which is, I think, the most common move you're going to see in your games. According to some statistics that I was checking, this is a very normal move uh, on Leach's databases. So after knight f3, I think we said we're going to play d5 here. In this game, they are playing with d6. But the ideas are still uh, interesting and similar, so let's take a look at what happens here. Bishop b3, b5, a3, knight d7. This is a more modern approach in this line, actually. Queen d2, bishop to b7, white castles queen set, and then fire on the queen side with a5. We want to play before uh, any time soon. In the end, there is d5, which is not really a good idea, because they are opening our bishop. A lot so we can continue here with b4 after knight b1 there's a trade they take back and then development putting pressure in the center also ideas with knight e4 uh, bishop c4 you can castle and then after rook h to e1 queen c7 bishop to a2 knight e4 this is an idea that we were talking about also you're opening your bishop at this point queen d3 knight c5 Bishop takes, knight takes, this position is totally won for black already. The idea is like, once they move the queen, in the end we have queen e3. There is a fantastic move here, it's the beginning of a really nice special combination, very original. The move that black plays here is b3. Uh, we are taking the bishop, the bishop is trapped, they cannot capture with the pawn because the queen is on the same line, so they have to capture with the bishop. Actually, in the game, white played knight c3, but this is clearly losing material and losing the game, and white resigned very soon. But let's take a look at the line that we care about. It's when they play bishop takes b3 in this position, black to move. Really nice idea. Black is winning here. The queen is the defender, so we're going to distract the queen, because if we can take here, it's not only getting one piece, it's also checkmate. So there is this move, bishop to h6. Brilliant idea. And, well, the queen takes. If the queen doesn't take, we're getting the queen. If the queen takes, we have knight takes b3 with checkmate. If you guys have any question, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, play the right move, and see you next.